Hello and welcome to Reef Girls Weekly Reef Wrap-Up number 8. Plans were last week to bring the tank in, but then this happened. What I can't really show you here was the ice that was underfoot. Too dangerous. If someone lost their footing, that would not be a good thing. However, it did turn out to be a good thing that we waited because the plan has changed. I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the video. I picked up a new power head this week. The new SLW10 is in place and I have it on. I can get the controller from its jankety location here. Full speed on else mode. Yeah, stay. <laughs> this is pretty risky, but maybe, maybe I'll put it over here because if it falls from here, it stands a much better chance of going straight down and not into the water. Okay, have to fix that up. So yeah, I'm super pleased with how this just kind of changes and it does reach almost all the way across. This guy just gets bigger and bigger. Love it. We had a huge snowstorm last night, which is the reason I couldn't have my tank brought in yesterday and with it, two power outages that lasted about 40 minutes each. So I always get out my trusty air bubblers. They take D batteries, and I don't store them with the batteries in. I put them in when I need them. So here I'm just disassembling everything, putting them back in their boxes, and stashing the batteries over here. The air lines are kept here, attached to air stones, so there's three of them. They're just ready to pull out when I need them. And I can be up and running with bubblers probably in under 10 minutes. My husband wanted to share this tip. Don't use that white wrench that comes with your RODI system to tighten the canisters. This is what might happen. In fact, this is one that he kept that cracked because he used that wrench. You're really only supposed to hand tighten them. This one does not leak, luckily. So here's my trusty refractometer that I've had for like years. Did you know that this part comes off? I'll show you. Yes, it just slides off. Guess how I found that out? I found it out when I picked it up by this and this thing fell right out of my hand and slammed into the floor. So now my trusty refractometer is pretty jankety. My husband adjusted this this collar to rotate it so that at least I can get this plate flat against the lens but there's a giant black spot inside now. I calibrated it, did my readings, checked again to make sure it was still in calibration and it was fine. So yeah, on with the water change. Okay, we're prepping for a water change, finally. It's delayed by three or four days over when I originally planned to do it. I've moved all the corals that were on the skimmer stand down to the bottom in various places. There's the bubble coral right there. And then I've also moved that frag rack and where is it? The pectinia frag rack down quite a lot. So I can take this water change down to at least the top of the skimmer stand. Don't know how many gallons that is. I'm guessing maybe 30 but we'll find out. There's also kind of a peak right there that has mushrooms on it. I think it could be out of the water for a while without too much concern. So I'm gonna see how low I can take it. When we do a water change, we can divert the water from here and here so that it goes directly into the last chamber from the 150 and that effectively isolates this chamber so that we can do the water change. So we're going to shut this valve off and at, at the same time open that valve and then quickly shut this valve off under here. Uh, the clamp that's in the way is for my fancy water level indicator because <laughs> of course I need to know how much water to put back in when we're done. So before we start we mark the level. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do is use our handy dandy tool that my husband made for me. And this is to operate that valve, because it's a little stiff, 
and I can do this, but he's going to do it for me because I'm filming. But normally when I'm doing this by myself, I would do that. We'll close this and then close this. Okay, this valve and that one at the same time, right? There we go. All right, and then very quickly, we're gonna shut this one. So we now have the system isolated so that the water goes direct from the 150 down to here. And that can just keep running while we do the water change. So we're gonna use the same pump we use in the salt mixing station which is an innovative marine that actually is the backup pump that i have for the observation tank i have two of those so the hose is really long because we use this pump for everything down here and we're going to pump the water out directly into the sink and now i'm going to turn it on so here we go and there goes the water and we're draining into the sink so my plan here is to take the water level in this vessel as low as I can get it. All right, I'm not gonna make you watch that. We'll be back when we're ready to refill. So if you were wondering, the reason we're doing it this way is because there's livestock in here, including a lawnmower Blenny and an Aurora Gobi. And I know for a fact, the lawnmower Blenny goes into this pipe right here, which leads to this drain down here. When we designed this system, that is gonna be the water change. That was the intention. And we have a hose that connects to there and goes across the room to the floor drain over there. I'm really afraid of accidentally sucking up a poor little fish in the drain if we use this now. So for the time being, we're doing the pump thing. Once this is all empty and just has a skimmer or whatever, that's the whole idea was to use this empty container to do large water changes. Okay, so I shut the pump off. As soon as the top of the skimmer stand showed, that's the glass shelf that the skimmer's sitting on. So now we're gonna move this pump into that container, leave it plugged in exactly where it is, move the hose, so that it comes back over here, and then we'll start refilling. Pump is now in here. We have the hose held by my trusty assistant, <laughs> and the water's gonna be directed at the wall of the tank so that it can run down here and over, because I know the goby lives down here somewhere. So there he is right there. So I really don't wanna wash him away with a lot of water. And I don't know right now where the Blenny is, but he's probably hiding in that pipe that I mentioned before. So I'm gonna turn it on now. There we go. All right, this is new salt water being put back in. So now we just have to wait till that fills up to the fancy water level marker. While we're doing a water change, did some maintenance. This strainer was quite dirty, covered with loose algae and stuff like that, which isn't surprising because I've been picking away at it and I don't always, <laughs> I don't always manage to hold on to it. Sometimes it escapes and it ends up stuck to these drains. So while the water level is below here, it was a great time to give it a good clean. So that's been done. So you can see that my fancy dancy water level indicator, the water is getting really close to that. So maybe just slightly less than a half inch left to go. Here you can see there's a reflection of the water level marker. And what we've learned is that when that becomes a solid piece from the marker down to the reflection, then it's time to shut the pump off because the water has reached the marker. You can see there how the gap has disappeared. All right, so now I can turn on the power heads again. This one and this one. And there we go. So now to restore the flow, I need to open the valve that comes from the 150 at the same time as closing that so we can restore the flow there. Okay, ready? There we go. And we restore the flow here. Okay. So now the system is running as before. Looking at the water level over here, we think we changed roughly 35 gallons. 
silicone lines on the little cam or dripping doser that I use in the observation tank have performed really well. So I decided to swap all of the tubes out. And in fact, I also swapped the doser <laughs> to a newer one. I had two. The one I had been using was the older one and I just thought, oh, I'm gonna take it apart and see whether there are any cracks in the tubing and the dosing heads because that has never been replaced and that thing is many years old. So we did this, I got my husband to help me because this is a two person job and this silicone tubing runs through there and along there and up and over there and into the dosing tube holder in the tank. So that's all good, the lines are all full and over the next few days I'm going to monitor the alkalinity and calcium closely because I have a feeling not much was getting dosed. More baby steps towards having the tank in the house. <laughs> Lighted switched power bars. These are either side of the tank. They will be hidden by the tank when it's there. They're for gyres, power heads, and whatever else might come along. One other thing I did this week was set up dosing of all for reef on the frag tank. I'm struggling to keep alkalinity above seven in this tank. The last test was 6.98. So it could stand to be higher because there are SPS in there. So I picked up one of these Camor X1 dosing pumps. They're only 80 bucks. They do the job. The Camor Dripping Pro over there on the wall has served me well for three and a half years. So got another one. The app is so easy to use and set up. And I am dosing through the same bracket as the ATO. So we'll see how that goes, see if I can manage to stay on top of the alk a little bit better. Yeah, look at this. Oh my God, it's awful. All right, this is my bubble coral. I almost lost this coral and it's coming back. It has a baby, you can see, but look at the sponges on here. I have removed the ones that were right up against the flesh of the coral itself. I don't know, do you think I should take the rest of them off of here? They gotta be good filter feeders, but I don't know. So you can see how many there are, and I've developed a way to take them off without actually touching anything. I can leave the coral in the water. What do you think? Okay, come on guys, I'm trying to get, there we go. This little critter is doing such a great job. So here's why the delay in bringing the tank into the house turned into a good thing. They decided to build a ramp to make sure that they could get the tank safely intact up and over the stairs and into the house. I'm really pleased about this. So thanks for watching and if you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in seeing what ends up happening getting the tank into the house. Stay safe everybody and I'll see you next week.